Okay, first of all, thank you for this interview and your time. And uh, our last big interview was about a year ago when um, Air Baltic started to recover from COVID-19 situation and uh, all this crisis and pandemic and stuff like that. So my first question is how Air Baltic and industry itself doing right now? So we are definitely recovering from COVID as an industry now. We're coming out of this crisis. It wasn't last year, it's really happening only now because we went back into crisis mode uh, end of the year, all of us in Europe. But now we're coming out of it. It looks like uh, booking numbers for all European airlines are steeply going up also for Air Baltic. And the, the war in Ukraine has, of course, put a, a little break uh, onto the bookings, also especially for airlines like Finnair and us as we are at the border. But still we see um, a very strong uh, booking increase now towards the summer season, which means we are coming out of the corona crisis. When we will be in uh, like pre-COVID time? Uh. We, we, Air Baltic will be in pre-COVID time if we continue on this path in 2024. Um, and that is in line with the other airlines. So on profitability, our industry does not expect to be profitable this year, only next year. Uh, and that is also the case of, of Air Baltic. Uh, but if we continue on in this path, then uh, next year, we sh most airlines should return to profitability. So we can say that uh, COVID-19 restriction lift off and uh, stuff like that uh, is increasing passenger numbers. Yes, the, the restrictions gone increases, but of course the fear that you can get COVID uh, when you travel uh, is, is also something. And there is now a, a completely different segment of passengers. While we used to have a lot of um, business travel in Europe uh, where companies and the people were traveling, this is not returning as fast. So what we see now is all the people who couldn't go on a, on a holiday, who couldn't visit their friends and relatives. This is now at the moment what we see the steep increase. What we haven't seen returning yet to the same extent is the business related travel. So the, the big companies, they are not traveling the same way they were traveling before. And maybe due to many real um, rules in, in large corporations, it might not return to the same levels. Also because of sustainability, a lot of companies today now have rules for sustainability that their employees cannot just fly as often as they did it before. So our industry uh, has to take care of this, but still we will see higher passenger numbers in the future than we saw before. So maybe these business related trips are lacking because of uh, remote work, maybe? A, a little bit it is remote okay. work, but most of it is the um, uh, online, uh, being able to do uh, online conferences, but also sustainability. So the, the, uh, every, every uh, company today uh, has to show what they are doing on sustainability and therefore travel per se. It doesn't matter whether it's a plane or with a bus or with the car, will be reduced to have a less, um, a less climate change uh, uh, impact as a company because all companies have the target, including Air Baltic, to become more sustainable. And in our industry, we're becoming net zero by 2050. We have committed to this. So we are also on that way. But of course, the connectivity airlines provide is needed and there will be more flights in the future. Just the mix is different. Okay, and <clears throat> if we are talking about, for example, autumn, will Air Baltic be ready if there is, I don't know which one, but the next COVID-19 wave? Uh, re we were always ready, right? We, were have, we had to adjust all the time and we will adjust if COVID returns. Uh, I think what now the world has learned uh, on COVID is there will be masks coming, there will be restrictions coming on traveling. But I think we also learned that certain restrictions were not needed, like having every country having a different entry pass. Uh, uh, there were a lot of things which we didn't know better as, as all the European countries on how to deal with it. I think the next time we would get into any of these crises, um, we would have better, we would be better prepared a, as Europe, and therefore we would not shut down countries as we saw it before. I don't think that that will come again, but of course we would see again a reduction in traffic if we would have another pandemic. Okay, last year Air Baltic asked for about 90 million euros from Latvian government, but European Commission gave green light for only a half. How this impacted company? Uh, didn't impact us so far because the second half is uh, now coming and uh, we, we expect this to, to come now in spring uh, and it didn't affect us at all. So we did not have to do anything because this money is needed to take us 
out of the uh, crisis, so it's in the total cash flow planned in to take the airline out of the crisis, and we expect a positive decision in the next weeks. Many people in Latvian society think that government should not give money to Air Baltic. What is your comment about this? Um, I, f I fully understand that because it is not visible for the general public what is the return of the investment in Air Baltic. We, have, we exist for 26 years in, in Latvia as an airline and we have our job is to transport passengers and goods, the mail and the cargo. And in these 26 years, the, the Latvian state has invested overall 495 million euros in the company in 26 years. This is what the state has put in. On the other hand, uh, Air Baltic has paid taxes in 26 years to the Latvian state in the amount of 275 million euros. So that was direct cash going from us to the state. We also paid for loans, interest uh, 12 million. The money we got now for the time, for the corona time, actually we have to pay back with the IPO. If you now take these numbers and you subtract it, then for 26 years there was Air Baltic here earning the money all the time to do what we do, transporting 48 million passengers. And uh, the GDP impact, how we measured it and, and how it was confirmed over the last 26 years, if you accumulate it for Latvia, was around 9 billion euros. So if you now look at the investment, then you see that, the, that Air Baltic itself for the country is a very, very profitable business. And I think everybody understands that if you look at the impact of Air Baltic to the economy over all the time. If you just look at the last two years, the corona time, and you say we needed help like all airlines in Europe to get out of this, then of course isolated few, you would say it's a lot of money. But if we look at Rail Baltica, that is a train which is going to be there for the infrastructure. The investment is 1.8 billion, but it has not done anything yet, but it will in the future return. Uh, or the road system in Latvia, the investments in the road system. There, there is no questions, but when it is about Air Baltic, then people immediately say this is negative. But it's actually the opposite, because having Air Baltic or not having it would make that big impact for the economy. And I think uh, and, and it's, it's my mistake that I'm not able to bring this over as the CEO to the wider public, because when I have an individual discussion, then people understand it. But the public, the headline view is always that uh, there is hundreds of million going into Air Baltic. What is coming back? They are making losses. No, we are earning. Uh, a lot of money, a lot of money. We're, we're doing a lot of, we're responsible indirect for 30,000 jobs in Latvia. So uh, we employ currently seven, uh, 1,755 people here. They, they are Latvians, they are uh, taking part in the society. So yes, I understand uh, that it is a lot of money, but compared to other investments, which are not returning uh, uh, something to the state, Air Baltic is a very profitable investment and uh, 200 million, 300 or 400 million investment in Air Baltic are always returned in a very nice way. We have, for example, uh, no, no, not to finish here, we, are in, we invested into uh, the most modern aircraft in the world. With the money, we are buying these aircraft, then we are doing sale and leaseback, and we are using this asset. So it's, a, it's, a, it's like, a, like a machine producing something in Latvia, and, and all of that has an impact to the economy. And, and our aircraft, one of them, the list price is $90 million for one aircraft. So these are big numbers, uh, and these big numbers lead also to big investments to get to, to the profits. Yes, and if you are talking about paying back this money, uh, last year you mentioned that Air Baltic could start uh, sell uh, stocks. Yeah, we, we will, uh, so we have to yeah. uh, go to the stock exchange at a time when we are back in profit, profitable EBITDA numbers. So we have to be showing the numbers which we had in 2019. So when we, when we are back at these numbers, then we will go to the stock exchange and list the airline at the stock exchange and make the shares of Air Baltic available to the whole world, to investors, also to the public. And when that happens, then the state which has now more shares will sell their shares, some of them, and with that they will return the money which they have given in, which means the cash which Air Baltic got will have to be returned to the Latvian state, that money returns in form of selling the shares. And uh, that is a, a decision which was taken because we had to say, uh, or the state had to say, to give us the money, how is it returned? Uh, that is expected to happen in 2024 
uh, or the following year, we don't know yet because we need to be sure that the airline is back in profit. Okay, and uh, if you are talking about current situation on geopolitical stage, um, how Russia's war in Ukraine is affecting Air Baltic because we had many flights to and from Ukraine, uh, also to and from uh, Russia. For this year, for the total year, uh, it is about 9% of the total revenue, uh, the total income of Air Baltic was planned to be 9%, 2.7% in uh, from Russia. So that's that we are missing and we will not be flying to Russia. And 6.8% Ukraine flying. We are currently not flying to Ukraine. We hope for peace there and that we would immediately start flying again. And then of course we would also uh, make some of that money again. Currently we have no income from that and we have taken that capacity and we are flying to other destinations. So overall we are making the same money but we are not making it from Ukraine uh, or Russian flying. But um, long term, uh, even if we would not fly to Russia in the, f in the long term future, that is not a big problem for us because we can fly more to the West. Of course we would like to fly back uh, in Ukraine because it was a bigger market for us than Russia uh, and we would like to, to go back as early as possible. And um, the closure of Russian airspace, how this is affecting because we have I think two flights to Dubai and uh, to Tbilisi which, is cross, which was crossing this airspace. Yeah. It has uh, for, it, it's quite, quite a lot of flights which are impacted, not only uh, the Russian airspace closure, mm -hmm. also the closure of the airspace in Belarus, but also the, um, the closure of the airspace in Kaliningrad, because also that is having an impact on us. So what we see now is longer flights to Dubai, also to the Greek islands, uh, to everything which is going southeast, uh, it's longer flights. Uh, and that means I have more cost for the fuel on these flights and that led to two destinations Yerevan and Baku that we did not open them because there the profitability on these two with these longer flights was not working out for us currently. They will come back later because we can, we can operate also in the future by circumnavigating uh, all of these. But of course ideally would be um, the war is over and we will be going back to open air spaces. But if, if not, then we will be flying uh, in the West. We have taken two aircraft this year extra and they are flying for the Lufthansa Group uh, in Germany and they are earning money there for us, so that's a profitable part of what we do. We only did that uh, because of the closure of the airspace uh, temporarily here. Mm -hmm. And uh, you mentioned that uh, longer flights is uh, making uh, bigger costs, so the ticket prices also will grow up or it will be the same level? The, the, the starting level of the ticket prices will always be the same. You will, for 1990, you will be able to buy your ticket. But in general, the cost pressure on airlines is there like on anything else. The energy costs are going up and therefore we expect airline ticket prices to rise over time. But we are not increasing the ticket price proactive, it, it's the market and the general inflation which is making things uh, more expensive but in the uh, in the level we see it that the passenger who buys one time a ticket for 19 and then a ticket for 150 euro the individual passenger will not feel it because in general our industry is not able to just increase price like you can do it at the grocery store we cannot do this because competition is defining the ticket prices so if there's many competitors and the prices are low, we cannot just increase the ticket prices. So th there will be an increase because of cost increase over time, inflation, but it will not be visible that the passenger says, oh, they have increased now by 20 euros because our pricing starts at 19 euros and then goes all the way up to 1,000 euros. So everything in between, it depends on when you book, which destination, which route, and that's how we do the ticket prices. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are seeing uh, big posters with supporting uh, support for Ukraine and things like that. Maybe there is a thought about uh, coloring plane in uh, flag of Ukraine because we saw it in Baltic uh, Way anniversary that there was three planes with uh, Baltic state flags. Uh, it was something we discussed to, to color one plane uh, in, in Ukraine colors to show our support. We then decided, uh, because at that time we were hoping for peace to be there very fast, 
uh, we decided for many different measures. We flew with the president and picked up refugees. That's something Abotic did. We are showing it. You see the flags outside at the building. We are also showing it with different measures in the airline. We are employing people from Ukraine and we have uh, contact with Ukraine International Airlines, which is our co-chair partner airline in Ukraine. And we are in contact with them, see what we can do together, even in the times of war, because they have some aircraft outside. So we as Air Baltic try to do our utmost to support Ukraine, but we've refrained from painting a plane in, in their colors. Okay. And how many Ukrainians are working in Air Baltic? I don't know the exact number, but uh, for example, one person we, we, we really now made very visible was our station manager in Kiev. Um, she was in Kiev, she decided to stay there when the war started. Uh, we brought back all other people who were employed by Air Baltic um, when the war started. She later then decided she also needs to leave and uh, she came here and she's now working here in the headquarter, but she's still in charge of these markets, not only um, Kiev, also other markets. And for us, it's like symbolic. We want her to go back to her office in Kiev. And the whole company knows about it. Yeah, she's, she's here working with us now, but that's something we do. Uh, we have a number of Ukraine uh, nationals working here. We are now employing cabin crew also um, uh, here, the, the, the ones which were either flying for Ukraine International or we are training new cabin crew. So we do that as well, but the total number I don't know mm -hmm. uh, by heart now. How about pilots? Uh, I don't think that we have any Ukraine national pilots. Okay. We are recruiting pilots also for the future, many pilots, because we get more aircraft and there would be nothing speaking against a Ukraine pilot. Okay. Um, okay, you already mentioned that uh, some of planes are leased to, for example, Hansa Group. Um, in flight radar, I saw that uh, there are flights for Eurowings, also from, for SAS. Uh, how many planes in total we have leased? This, this year for the summer season, in the peak, we will have 11 planes flying out of Düsseldorf, Stockholm and Munich. And they are flying with our cabin crew, our colors, uh, but they are flying the passengers of Eurowings, Eurowings Discover and SAS. So for this summer, it will be 11 planes. And the reason for that is that if we put the planes here and we let them fly empty, they would be losing money. While when we fly there, we get paid for the flights and uh, we do not have to uh, worry about can we fill them or not. Once we are having enough passengers, when there is enough inbound traffic also to Riga, then of course these planes will be used again here or in Vilnius or in Tallinn or at any basis which we will open. But we always said we will also have that part of the business um, and we are flexible because this normally is only for half a year. Um, and if we say in winter we can do something else, with the plane, then we do something else. So that's a business which we have in our business plan to say that in, when we have 50 airplanes, up to 15 airplanes could do this kind of business because this is where we uh, help making profits. So that, is a, that part is a profitable contribution to our business. Uh, do other airlines do the same? Yes, there's, for example, a, a very famous Latvian airline, Smartlinks. That's the core of their business in the past. Uh, but they're doing it a little bit different because they do it more ad hoc. But they also have uh, had aircraft uh, with TUI, with Condor in the past. What we have, we have done this already uh, since we are here. So we have done this in Vietnam, in Beirut. We have done it for Lufthansa before, but it was two or three airplanes. Now, because of the Airbus A220, we could give all of our airplanes to others because the aircraft is so much needed now. It's the best aircraft to have in, in these times because it can fly short haul, it can fly long haul, it uses the minimum fuel and uh, it is uh, perfect for the passenger comfort. So we have much more request to have this aircraft flying for others than we can satisfy. Uh, we, we, of course, our core business is the connectivity of the Baltics. That's our business and we want to get back to where we were before because this is where we make more revenue and that is why Air Baltic uh, is growing because this is what we want to do. Part of the business will be the wet lease business, which is for us a profitable part. How many planes we are expecting this year, new planes? There is one coming next week, so that's number 34 and then another six. So in total, end of this year, we will have 40 Airbuses. Okay. And uh, how about cargo flights? We are seeing increase or the same level as uh, last year? We have uh, no cargo flights. We only fly cargo when we can take yeah. it in, in our air, uh, passenger aircraft. 
we were flying a significant, or we are flying significant post and mail in the cargo hold on, on all the flights. And with, this, with that actually, Air Baltic is the largest mail operator in the Baltic states. Without us, we would not have uh, mail transportation in the Baltic states. We are the number one there. Uh, and that we continue. But we will not go down the path to have extra cargo airplanes. Uh, I know Smartlings has transitioned to that. Good step for them. Air Baltic is passenger business and we will be focusing on this and not transitioning to cargo business. Okay, our last talk was in Dubai in December and it's been three months since co-chair agreement was signed with Emirates. How this cooperation is going on? V very successful. We had very big success on the Dubai flights, uh, also because Dubai and Tenerife were, were destinations passengers really wanted to go to. If we look now at the success of Emirates selling tickets, on Air Baltic, that has also been, we are not disclosing the precise numbers, but it's a sizable number. So uh, we are talking here about bigger numbers of passengers, which are so, where Emirates has sold the tickets that the passengers fly on Air Baltic. So that partnership is going very well. And that is why we continue the partnership also now with a short break in the summer, but we continue uh, th then again in, in late summer. Uh, and we'll have that Dubai flight uh, going. It uh, is a very successful operation for both sides because we're also selling on Emirates. Will there be people on this uh, Riga Dubai flight because many, many flew there because of Expo 2020? Yes, th we have no problem at the moment with these flights. They are still full. Uh, so it's a very, it's not only to Dubai, we have also passengers. So we sell, for example, most of the tickets are sold to Jakarta, to Bangkok, so the, the, the passengers are taking that flight and then uh, go somewhere else because it's a very good connectivity to go via Dubai. Okay, and I have heard rumors that Air Baltic is working on coach share agreement with one of the biggest airlines in US, Delta Airlines. Is that true? That is true. We have the coach share agreement with Delta Airlines. We are waiting now for the uh, audit from the Federal Aviation Administrations, the FAA in the US. They have audited Latvia because Latvia needs to be a level one country in aviation terms for the US. And when this audit has passed, then we can execute our co-chair with Delta Airlines, which is already there. And then we will have a co-chair with Delta Airlines. Yes. That means first that we connect our passengers uh, where the Delta Airline planes land in the rest of Europe. Uh, and from there, the co-chair goes on to the US. And then in the US, there's also the co-chair. But uh, that would be, or that, that co-chair itself uh, will of course be very, very successful for Air Baltic. But we, the, the, the country needs to pass first the audit, which has already been started. And once that audit has passed and all the documents are signed, then our co-chair will come into effect. Okay, last question. Is there something you want to add? Yes, the expansion of Riga Airport is something <laughs> I would like to say. We are looking forward, we see all the building starting now uh, with Rail Baltica terminal which is very important for Air Baltic that the airport is expanding because we were in 2019 at the capacity limits at the airport and we will see this peak summer already passenger numbers at the airport, not only Air Baltic, also other carriers, where we will come to the same situation. So therefore everything Riga Airport does for the future will help Air Baltic uh, to deliver its product, a good product to the customers. And Rail Baltica will help to bring even more passengers for Air Baltic because you will have then a much better access from the Baltic states to Riga Airport because only at Riga Airport we have the train terminal at the airport and only Latvia has Air Baltic being so large. And if we continue on that path, we will have a, a very bright future if it is about passenger trans air passenger transport to the Baltics. Thank you very much. You're welcome.